Good morning. I had a bunch of comments on my Deluxe Reverb video, five things you should be doing with your Deluxe Reverb, that were saying things like, oh, is this going to work on my Hot Rod Deluxe? Does this work on a Twin? Does this work on a Princeton? Does this work on the Fender Tone Master thing? And I'm like, I don't know. I've got one Deluxe Reverb that works on mine. <laughs> I think it works on the reissues. And I do have another Fender amp. Another black panel Fender amp, my 66 Princeton Reverb. So I wanted to see if the same settings apply on this amp as well, right? I don't have two channels, so I can't jumper and set different EQs and get a different reverb tone out of it. If you haven't seen the video, that's really cool, by the way. Number four in the Deluxe Reverb video out of the five tips. But I can turn the volume and the treble all the way on 10 and leave the bass really low and see if that gets the same kind of rock and roll solo tone that, that I had before. So I've got, I've got the exact same setup from the other video. This is running out to the Morgan 112 cab in my garage that's mic'd up with a Heil PR30. Uh, I have a uh, warehouse ET65 speaker in it. It's an open back cabinet. Um, same, same cabinet, same mic placement, everything from the last video. It's running into my Chandler TG2, into my Apollo Twin, straight into Pro Tools. And I've got this amp set, volume 10, treble 10, bass 2.4. <laughs> Looks like it's just under two and a half. Uh, reverb is 2.8, maybe. And the tremolo circuit is off. So let's just see how it sounds. Pretty awesome. No pedals whatsoever. You're hearing reverb from the Princeton. So uh, I'm, I've got the same song dialed up uh, that I was working on, and I've just got a bunch of stuff muted, just just some basic rhythm tracks left over, so so we can maybe do this same kind of solo. And just going in cold here. Let's see what happens. cool same sort of thing right i think it sounds really good too <laughs> and you might get away with a princeton on 10 at a gig whereas it's probably a little harder to get away with the deluxe reverb on 10 at a gig right so uh that was thing number one that you're supposed to do thing number two i'm already doing that as well is use it as a head you know i remember when i was a fledgling nashville guitar player I used to go see, along with all other fledgling and non-Nashville guitar players at the time, we would go watch Tom Bukovac play with Pat Buchanan at 3rd and Lindsley. This was the old 3rd and Lindsley that was a lot smaller. The stage was like a diagonal, um, it, it was like in the corner, and if you were sitting in the front row, like they're basically standing at your knees, you know. Um, like you're sitting in these chairs and, and the, the stage is right there at knee level. <laughs> uh, it was a lot more intimate. It was a lot more, um, I don't know, just like there, there's, you feel more exposed, I think. There's less of a disconnect between the crowd and, and the stage. And, um, you know, we would all go play because Tom's just an incredible, incredible musician. And one of the things that he was doing at the time, which a bunch of other people started doing, 
was running a Princeton reverb as a head into a 212 cabinet. And uh, he would use like a Dr. Z cab or a Bogner. And I just remember watching him play these gigs and, and playing vintage 335s into an old Princeton reverb or vintage SGs, which Les Pauls at the time, you know. And it just sounded incredible. And you can get a totally different sound, you know. The Princeton comes with a 10. I, I have a, um, I guess this is, this is tip number 2.5. You can run a 12 in your Princeton cabinet. It will fit. Uh, you need to get a new baffle for it. I think, I, I, I don't even, I've lost count of how many speakers I've put in this ridiculous amp. Um, to my ear, with this circuit, this size of cab just doesn't like a 12 as much as like a Tweed Deluxe. A Tweed Deluxe cabinet is about the same size, but the circuit's wildly different. To me, a 12 like this in this cab just did not sound right. Um, the right low end response, the right amount of air in the note and air around the note, I always got with a 10 inch speaker. So the speaker I landed on that I have in it is an old Eminence um, made by, sorry, made by Eminence, but it was a Mojo Tone branded speaker with that sort of um, pink and blue font you know, from the 90s. And it was like a replacement speaker for a Fender Bassman or something like that. And uh, I just happened to find one for really cheap and I put it in this amp and I was like, oh, it's got everything. It's a ceramic speaker. It's got the punch. It's got the, uh, it holds together under gain. It holds together with low end. Um, and it just it just sounds like it's the right speaker for that cab size, you know. I watched eBay for years until another one came up with the same label, and I bought it, and I put it in just to hear it, and it had cone cry, and I was like, dang it. So when this speaker goes, I'm going to be on the hunt again, you know. But all that to say, um, running it into an extension cab is really cool because it's a small kind of quieter amp that has a totally different EQ response than, than a deluxe reverb, um, running it to an extension cab, I think you get a bigger difference than you do with, with a deluxe. Or maybe that's just my perception because I'm running both into a 112 open back cabinet that's roughly the size of my deluxe reverb cab, just on its side, you know. So running the Princeton out to that, I get a bigger difference than when I'm listening to the internal speaker. That might be the case as well. Um, and then the last tip, it's going to be a much shorter video. My settings for running a pedal board. I'm generally, on this amp, I'm around 6, uh, six 7, and 3. And I'm a little under 7, really. But this is what, this is what I use for, uh, for a pedal board. <laughs> Turn on some reverb, a little delay, a little Nordland. So I, I just think it's great settings for, for like a pedal board platform. I'll turn on a heavy fuzz pedal. This is a throwback overdrive boost that I have set pretty, pretty high.
got some Voodoo Vibe. Back to a cleaner sound. section in vibrato mode. Here's just chorus mode. fake synthy sounding 12 string. Here's a really interesting setting on the POG. No extra octaves anywhere, but set the dry signal to have an envelope to it. Pretty cool. Son of Kong. So like everything just sort of melts in with the amp. Those three tips from the Deluxe Reverb video, they, they work on this too, you know? To the people who are commenting and saying, will this work on this amp? Will this work on this amp? I got sick of writing, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you try and report back? Um, try it. Let us know. Let us know in the comments. All right. Hey, subscribe if you haven't. You know, uh, YouTube suggests my videos to lots of people who aren't subscribed. Um, lots of people who aren't subscribed. Like, I think 35,000 people have watched the Deluxe River video, and I have like 6,000 subscribers. So subscribe if you want more of this stuff. Make sure you don't miss out on any of the other things I post. I, I typically just talk about how to play guitar in a way that makes you hireable. That's the whole angle for this channel. I don't want to just show you licks. I don't want to just show you fretboard patterns or the cage system or just show you pieces of gear. I think all that's great. Um, 
the you know YouTube's got that covered without me in it. Where I think that I can fit is by helping people be the kind of guitar player that drummers want in their band. You know, you're listening to the drums, um, or the type of guitar player that bass players want to be in their band, because you're listening to the bass player and staying out of their way. And most importantly, the kind of guitar player that singers and artists want in their band because you make them sound better and you're not stepping all over them. That's kind of my angle with YouTube. And I think I'm going to uh, offer some courses here in the near future. This is kind of hard for me to put together because I have a full-time job playing guitar outside of this channel. So this sort of happens in my margins, which are very thin already. You know, being a husband and father, I have vanishingly little spare time. But I would like to start offering some uh, educational products from my own journey, you know. Like, I, I was given a guitar at the age of 13, 12 or 13. And I came out of my bedroom six years later. <laughs> That's really how it went for me. I learned everything by ear and with some tabs from a guitar magazine I'd grab now and then. Um, and I've always been the kind of person who, when I hear something that I like or I hear something that I think is cool, I have to figure out why. Why is that cool? Why do I like it? Why does it work? Is it the chords underneath it? Is it the pattern? the rhythm pattern that's happening behind it, what makes that cool? What makes that usable? And so um, I, I'm kind of a natural teacher. You know, I, I used to teach math before. I taught at Kansas State and a tech college in, in Kansas before moving to Nashville to play guitar. I just had to try to play guitar for a living. And so I left my <laughs> other vocation that I went to school for seven years for and got two degrees. Um, so, you know, all, all credentials or lack of credentials aside, I, I like to understand things in a way that makes it easy to communicate. And that's not to say that some of the concepts aren't going to be advanced. Like there's some pretty advanced things that I, that I feel like I stumbled on myself, just the way that I visualized the fretboard, the way that I approach playing in different keys on the fretboard how like what am I what patterns I'm using when I'm actually trying to come up with melodies it's not scales I, I don't look at scale patterns really at all on the fretboard um, it's a lot more chords for me you know and that's where the melodies lie is in chord tones uh, when you get outside of that you get extra colors which are cool but um, anyway I am rambling Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next time. Thanks.